sacrifice our people Israel to Kiddushin, the sacred rite of marriage at the Chupa. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. Chris Grandy, uh, another time for another video. Time for me again to wear a black shirt. Beautiful day today, Friday, uh, October 7th. Uh, this week's video, it is a nice mix of stuff. It's a little bit of financial economic stuff, but this, this is also a great uh, um, case study in someone's, one of my neighbors and their health results from getting rid of dairy. Um, there's a, a little talk about what we do behind the scenes here on a week-to-week -week basis or what are we working on right now. There's uh, talk about cutting expenses and how to have a low cost, or, you know, how to lower your costs in retirement, our upcoming talks, and just a little bit of uh, all kinds of fun things. So uh, we got that coming today and I uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks for joining me. Please, if, if you do like the video, share it with your friends. Secondly, like it down below on, if this is on YouTube and you're seeing it, hit the like button. And number three, um, you know, subscribe. I'm going to send these out weekly. I'm going to try to get to a weekly point with videos and do my email list uh, once a month so I don't inundate people with that, but weekly videos. Um, so if you want to get those right when I publish them, subscribe down below. And uh, again, share it with them with the people that you think this might be helpful to or might enjoy it. And any comments, I'd love to hear. If there's things you want me to talk about, please bring them up in the comments section below and uh, I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hey everyone, it wouldn't be Friday without me, a video, and a black shirt, wouldn't you say? So just wanted to drop a, walking over to um, my favorite little cafe only because I, I need a little snack and also because I need to go for a walk. But I wanted to share with you a great health story. Uh, one of my neighbors, uh, Jack, had uh, come to, you know, I'd seen him for the last probably 8, 12 months, I don't know how long now. He's been experiencing um, just, just terrible health conditions, breathing problems not feeling well and um, and so I said to him I said you know Jack have you tried diet you know because just he's been trying he's been seeing doctors etc and he said I said you try diet I said what do you eat every day I said do you have any milk he says well I start every day with a glass of milk and I said okay why don't you cut that out get rid of the milk and I said what else are you eating I said you know what the best thing you could do right now is probably go on a elimination diet and just try that and he goes you know what because my nephew's a, a MD he told me the same thing it's okay, we got two people now telling you maybe it's what you eat. So he's like, okay, I'll try that. I don't know, and I didn't know if he's gonna try it or not. So uh, he did. I guess he did because I saw him two days later, and he says to me, um, you know, he says to me, uh, uh, I said, Jack, I said, uh, what's going on, man? How you feeling? How, how's the? Because I feel much, much better. I'm much better, you know. And I said, well, yeah. and I mentioned something about, you know. You know, I said, you keep that up, you'll probably, you know, get rid of arthritis and stuff too. He goes, he goes, it's already gone. He said, I wasn't even trying, he wasn't even thinking of that. I said, but he goes, I had all these pains, they're all gone. So in two days, dropping the milk and eating, he went, uh, focused on eating rice and sweet potatoes and going on a uh, um, elimination diet and eating very simply. He has cured his, um, his arthritic pains, whatever's causing those, and he's breathing and feeling much better. Before he felt like he couldn't go to uh, go to a trip out on the west coast to visit some friends. Now he feels like he might be able to. Amazing, two days. So just thought I'd share that awesome health story. Kick the dairy, boost your health. I have a book recommendation for you all that I think we uh, I've just started to read. So it's actually a recommendation for all of us to read together. Uh, it's called Mastery by George Leonard, and one of my uh, financial planning mentors, whom I admire greatly. Uh, said this is one of the best books he's ever written. Um, some of you may or may not know that I do practice martial arts and uh, George Leonard is also a, uh, a teacher. And he actually lives pretty close to where my mother-in-law lives in California. So, um, interesting all the interconnections, but um, let me read one quote from this and why I feel like it's such an interesting uh, book. The book's called Mastery by George Leonard. All right, and great quote. Because he's talking about how uh, this book came about because he had written a series of articles and people requested this article so much that that he wrote this book uh, and the subject was mastery the mysterious process during which what is at first difficult becomes progressively easier and more pleasurable through practice the purpose of the feature was to describe the path that best led to mastery not just in sports but in all of life he says and to warn against the prevailing bottom line uh, mentality that put quick easy results ahead of long-term dedication to the journey itself 
And he said he had an immediate and extravagant response to that. So, hey, book recommendations, give it a try. I'm reading it, just starting to read it now. And if you want to join me, it's pretty cheap on Amazon or some other bookstore used. And uh, let me know what you think. Upcoming seminars, guys. Hey, listen, just be sure to uh, uh, make sure you look down below for a link um, for upcoming seminars. I've got a bunch coming up, uh, not a bunch, but a good number of them coming up, both that I'm hosting and also that I'm co-hosting with, uh, with some other professionals. So there'll be various topics like uh, how to construct a retirement portfolio. Uh, for those of you that my clients know, it's... Uh, reserves, floor, upside, and longevity. And what that means, you want to know what that means, you give me a call. I mean, those are how you allocate money. It's not stocks, bonds, and real estate. It's, it's reserves, floor, upside, and longevity. Um, secondly, we're doing, we're doing talks on, um, on downsizing your home. Always a hot topic. If you get you know, know people that are uh, uh, retired or thinking of downsizing their larger home, and, and, uh, and it's a good time for them to be working with an advisor who can help them through the whole process because there's multi-generational issues there, there's planning for the future, it involves like, uh, you know, it could be uh, forced downsizing because uh, because your mom got sick and you're taking care of her, or it could be voluntary, you know, you're, you're just gonna you know, um, get rid of your house and live a, a more worry-free worry -free lifestyle earlier. That's gonna be one of our talks coming up. Um, also doing some talks, some co-hosting some talks on, on uh, estate planning, on asset protection, and just a, a various other topics like that. So look for the link below to see what our upcoming seminar topics are gonna be and love to have you join. If you have any questions about that, call or email me, okay? The AICPA, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, uh, surveyed their, their CPAs uh, and, uh, and asked them what the biggest worry of their clients were. And uh, the majority of them answered that uh, running out of money in retirement was the biggest worry. And what I want to focus on with you right now is something I've talked about in, in, in some of my past uh, articles I've written, which is very powerful. And I think is you need to focus, if you're, in that, if you're worried about that, you need to really focus on expenses more than income. See, we can't control <clears throat> what the market does. Um, we can't control what interest rates are going to be. Now, if you talk to someone like me, who um, a registered, uh, well, I'm a retired management analyst, and I'm a member of the RIAA, the Retirement, Retirement Income Industry Association, we have definite views about building a floor, an upside, and, and those of you that my clients know what I'm talking about, but that's you know having a more secure retirement income stream, not leaving things to the whim of markets and, and interest rates and stuff like that. But uh, we still don't know what they're gonna do. But one thing you can control is your expenses. And I've met with many people over the years, and, and, and there's many ways to do this. You know. Uh, from anywhere from cutting a cable bill, which could save you hundred dollars a month, you know, I was uh, I just realized over my mom's last week that I can send my uh, the stuff on my phone. She has a smart TV, and I can just send stuff on my phone right to the TV. She doesn't need that hundred plus dollar cable bill. She if she has a smartphone, and a lot of smartphones these days have unlimited data plans. So for fifty bucks a month, you go to T-Mobile, get unlimited data, and you can stream videos to your TV at night. Um, um, then. You know, there you go. Um, so it's something to think about. Some of you don't want to cut the cord, but that's 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 an expense that you may or may not need. Uh, for those of you who are thinking bigger ticket items, I've talked to a number of people over the last 10 years that have considered going solar, and and the ROI, return on investment of that decision, for a lot of the people I've talked to has been over 10% a year of return. So combining the tax credits, the savings and such, and the elimination of inflation. Remember too, if you can, kind of flatten out your electric bill to zero or something, you're eliminating a, ri a potentially rising cost in the future, so you get a kind of a double benefit from that. That's been huge. I've also found that discretionary spending when you go shopping, you know, we, had, we looked at it ourselves and our family, we're doing this, that we have probably are spending two or $300 more a month at the grocery store buying stuff which is on a whim, which wasn't in our plan to buy, because you get kind of excited about it. And this adds up. And uh, you know, and for some of you who are looking for ways to, to be smart, maybe you need to go out with a list and just buy what's on your list and not, not overspend on that. Um, you know, th that and many other ways. I mean, you could have, uh, you know, when we sit down with people, we found that, uh, you know, they're, they're missing discounts on insurance policies they could be getting uh, big time, you know, that's hundreds of dollars a year. They're, um, you know, they're, they're paying um, excessive costs here and there. They're, uh, you know, maybe they haven't done a cost benefit analysis to the, the repairs on their old car versus getting a new one. There's just so many ways, and I think that's something you should look at uh, when it comes to it is 
don't just focus on the assets and the income, focus on the liabilities. And a 30 year retirement worth of expenses is a liability that you have to pay every year. You have to cover your living expenses. So something to think about is to focus on expenses. If you need help with that, call me and let's work on that because I've got lots of ideas and certainly have uh, um, uh, you know ways I can, I can help if we haven't done it already. So look forward to hearing from you on that and hope that all right, so some of you have asked, you know, what do we do on a, uh, on a um, you know, on a weekly basis and such when we're not doing this or that, you know, when we're not meeting with you, what are we doing? Uh, currently, we're working on tax forecasts, and this is something that we do. Uh, it's part of our deliverables. It's done behind the scenes, unless we need a question answered from you, but it's just part of our, you know, um, checklist, you know, for those clients that get our full service um, situation. You know, we, we do a, a tax forecast. Sometimes they're pretty easy to do because the situation is simple, but sometimes they're, they're more involved. And basically what we're looking for are potential hazards or costs or, 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 or uh, issues that need to be addressed before year end, and also some opportunities before year end. The purpose, the reason why we do it now is because there are tax moves that you can make before year end that you can't do after year end. Um, some of the more obvious ones like that are setting up a 401k for your business. Can't do that in February. You can contribute to an IRA on April 15th, but you cannot set up a 401k. There are some other things too. You know, if you haven't uh, uh, set up an FSA at work yet, a fle flexible spending account, and you have deductible expenses, you got to use your current income. That that's that's something that needs to be addressed early too. If you have other issues, like for example, let's say we're projecting that um, you're going to make too much money, and you may um, fall victim to the uh, the, med the Medicare surcharge, we want to address that beforehand. We don't want to take out too many, let's say you need extra money, and but you want to take it out of your IRA, but taking it out before December, December 31st is going to boost your income this year and cause you to, to get hit with extra taxes or expenses, uh, whether it's Medicare surcharge or getting into the next tax bracket, it makes sense to do that January 1st instead of December 31st or before. So these are the type of issues that we're looking for for people, kind of looking at their situation. And again, for a lot of people, it can be pretty simple, but for some people, it gets complex and there may be some opportunities. And for everybody, it could change year to year based on your situation. So that's what we're doing behind the scenes right now. It's our, along with our um, goals meeting, our GPO meetings with clients, we're doing our tax forecast. Okay, I'm gonna address this issue because it's come up a few times. And even though I've said it to a few people, they still come back to me with, 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 with the same impression, and I want to kind of get that, get this straight, and that is, and that is uh, how elections affect markets. And I just, uh, there's been enough studies on this that really in the long term, elections do not affect markets. And some of the stuff that seems to happen has so far been mainly, probably even more coincidental than, you know, causative. So um, <clears throat> just get that out of the way. If you look at historical data, uh, election cycle uh, presidents uh, who gets elected I should say who gets elected you know Republican Democrat doesn't really affect markets much and you know for those who are uh, concerned about this uh, or at least thinking about it <clears throat> there's a slight edge to to Democratic uh, presidents as far as market performance so uh, but on the other side of things um, the last two major re regime changes <clears throat> you know the last couple of changes when uh, Bush took office in 2000, and then when Obama in 08, we had uh, we did it was it was followed by some serious uh, financial market disruptions, and um, you could say those are coincidental. I don't know if, I'm not saying it's the party coming in or the party going out, but more of just a function of I don't know if the Fed and some of the other um, uh, people who would you know normally regulate these things ease off before our election. You know, for example, like there's no way if the Fed was going to raise rates, they weren't going to do it in in September, right? Before uh, you know, right before the election, and somehow because the market is so sensitive to interest rates, you know that would that, you know that could cause a disruption in the markets, might swing the election for people who don't really think about this stuff much and just kind of follow headlines. <clears throat> but so there is perhaps an op a chance that um, you know needed oversight and vigilance by regulators. Or just you know calming words or stern words from regulators and <clears throat> the Fed um, don't come when uh, when they're needed and that you know and therefore rather than them wanting to rock the boat with the presidential cycle you know even within a year or two of it um, they don't do what they need to do which for example the Fed 
probably should have raised rates a little bit because we've talked a lot about the solvency of insurance companies and health insurance companies and life insurance companies and banks. So, you know, for their benefit, that should have happened, but it didn't. So therefore, maybe we have a potential financial issue coming up here where we've had rates too low too long and which has masked underlying economic problems and therefore, um, you know, after the next president comes in, the Fed will, Fed will feel more free to act or speak freely and then you have some issues. So that just might be it. It may not be that the presidential party going in or out is causing changes, but there just may be, I don't know, issues with the regulators and stuff that don't do their job or the Fed or someone that causes these disruptions. We'll see. We could have another change after this election. So, and I don't, again, bottom line is I don't think it has to do with, you know, Trump or Hillary, because I think she's going to win anyway. I mean, it's kind of sad though, the fact that Hillary has to run and campaign uh, tells you probably how bad she is because Trump is so terrible. The fact that you didn't have to make an effort is pretty sad. But besides that point, um, you know, it's not who gets in, but just what's going on around them with regulators and stuff that might be an issue. So look out for that.